Thank you. Uh, welcome, everybody. Uh, it is approximately 1.35, and this is our second meeting of the joint workshop uh, with the Town Council's uh, Finance Committee and its staff, along with the School Board's Finance Committee and their staff. Uh, for attendance, I'll just go through and recognize uh, who we have present on the School Board. We have the School Board's Finance Chair, Chris Ciazzo, with us, um, Chairwoman Donna Beely and Christine Messingo. Um, for their staff, we have uh, Ms. Bolton from the Finance Department and Superintendent Dr. George Entwistle. For the Town Council, we have Councilors uh, Bill Donovan, Councilor Peter Hayes, and myself, Sean Babine, present. And our staff, we have Tom Hall, our manager, and Ruth Poirier, our Finance Director. So everyone, welcome and thanks for uh, coming to this second meeting. Uh, just a high-level overview before I turn it over to the facilitation team. Um, I believe, just to explain, uh, my understanding is that uh, Dr. Antwistle and Tom have agreed to kind of partner in the facilitation process and scribing for us. I do really appreciate that. And so today, um, uh, the superintendent will actually help facilitate this for us um, so that we can have a conversation. And today's conversation really focuses on a follow-up from our last meeting in which we sent set out, um, I want to say there were about 13 um, original basic understandings of what we wanted to look at in the budget process and today's purpose is to talk about setting the norms for our working group um, and the principles of those norms and then also start finalizing the budget process as far as its timeline and schedule but then also firm up uh, future dates for our meeting um, as well so we have a little bit of a task ahead of us and I know that uh, Dr. Antwistle will, will get us through that uh, very well. Um, even though it's not on the agenda, I did want to, we do have some guests from the um, public here, so I did want to um, open it up for a couple of minutes of public comments if anyone would like to speak at the beginning of the meeting. Um, if, you could, if you do, I just need to step up to the podium just like a regular meeting. Uh, not seeing any, we'll just move on and I'll turn it over to you, Dr. Antwistle. Okay, thank you. Um, uh, actually, Tom and I will be facilitating the meeting. My uh, portion is item three establishing norms and guiding principles. It's something that we do within the school district um, I, countless times with countless teams that are working on topics um, of uh, varying levels of um, intensity and complexity. Um, this is a very sam simple um, sample guideline for norm setting. Um, I will go through it real quickly and I will um, then ask you to do some independent thinking for about mm, three, to, three to four minutes. So um, as a group, in order to set some norms for uh, operating meetings uh, effectively and efficiently, uh, generally there's three to five norms that are selected that will cover just about any issue that might come up in the meeting. Um, the other critical part is that these norms should be ones that are most essential to accomplishing um, this group's goals. Uh, we'll capture them, and I will do the I will do the scribing today. The norms uh, can be posted for each meeting, or we can put it on the agenda. Uh, Tom and I can decide on that, but we'll have them available and, and present in the subsequent meetings. And they should be simply stated and stated in positive terms rather than negative terms. Uh, what I'd ask you to do is to take three to four minutes, take a look at some of these common norms. This is just pulled simply off the the. Uh, a, a website uh, that gives us a whole bunch of things to think about and then you can see that there are some blanks there. In the blanks what you could do is, I mean you can do whatever you would like in terms of your own note taking, but if there are some that particularly um, speak to you, you might want to circle them and we'll work off, I, I will work off the sheet first and then I'll capture the other um, ones that might be different than what we have on the sheet here um, up front there. So read through See if anything particularly speaks to you, and um, there's also room at the bottom to add your own contribution. So I'll just go quiet for three minutes.
I said, uh, three minutes is actually a long time. But, uh, <laughs> I, I, think we've, I think we've hit three minutes. I'm looking at my friend, friend Catherine, who is a wordsmith extraordinaire. Uh, are you all set with us? Okay. <laughs> I think having a sense of humor is always a, a good one. Right? Amen. But I don't know if that's on the list. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with the ones that you added to the list, and then I'm going to take my seat again, and we will go through the process of seeing if we can identify the critical um, elements that we want to add to the norms. Um, what I'll do is I'll go around quickly. If you don't have anything to offer, you can just pass. If it's already up there, you can just let me know. I'll put a little check by it. You want to start? Sure. Uh, transparency, avoid hidden agendas.
how are they going to find out what happened here? What's going to be the process by which that's delivered on both sides? Okay, you're saying that every, so everyone should follow, we should agree to a routine process to share the meeting outcomes with others. Christine. I'm fine. Happy? Tom? Uh, sense of humor. Forgive me if that's on that list. Is it on there? No. I think that's a, a good thing for us all to be mindful of. Yeah, I think so too. Um, actually, so I apologize. So transparency is actually already on that list. I didn't realize that. Okay. But the, the one that I, and, um, I have on my own is avoid territoriality. Territoriality. Think instead of the overall good for the community, our employees, and the constituency. Just because I serve on the council, I should not be, in essence, I'm saying I should not be also concerned with the schools. Okay. Uh, Bill, you, um, Peter, did you have another one to add? This is going to go quick. No, 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 no. Ruth, any others? Uh, Kate? Uh, we're back to you, Donna. I told you okay. I'd come back. So present problems in such a way that promotes mutual discussion and resolution. Okay. In other words, the, way, the manner in which the problem is presented. Uh, so say a little, say a little bit more. Problems. Okay. No, just just talk about it a little bit more. See if I can get it to three words. So, so. the manner in which the issues are presented promotes mutual discussion and resolution, and not confrontation or contention. Okay. So. So be right. Be problem solving with discussion and, res and resolution, right, or something along those lines. Okay. Maybe another way of saying it. Forgive me, Donna, for jumping in. Is it's kind of a, a recognition that we're all in this together. We all need to get mm -hmm. to an end point. Yeah, kind of a courteous presentation, not be pejorative. Mm -hmm. I think was in some of the list kind of allude to that too. I thought. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, problem solved with uh, discussion and, and a focus on reaching re resolution. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure if it's been mentioned, but uh, to recognize and respect our differences. Uh, That's not, is that not on that main list? No, it really is in one way or another. Respect differences? Yeah, there's, I mean. Of the two groups, you mean? Yeah, I mean, or differences different, of opinion. The different has a very. Uh, has a bit of a different, different uh, role, different role and responsibilities than doesn't have. It's almost like it's almost like Ruth said earlier. Yeah, there's you're appreciating all the perspectives, and then you're also respecting those. It does say nothing to each other. That covers I a lot of ground. I think he took Ruth. He stole Ruth. <laughs> Um, I think we will zip all the way back around again. I think we do, and then back to you with your third one, Donna. So work with mutual trust. Okay, this is where it gets complicated because what you're going to do is you're going to pick six. Okay, it can be any of these up here or any of the ones on your chart, okay? Prioritize the six that you think are most essential to getting our work done as a team here. Okay, could you do me a favor and just, can you write these for me? So are you looking one being the most important? Under your org chart, in the right corner. You can just pick six that you think oh, are okay, most essential. Oh, you don't want them prioritized then. Actually, you know what's easier? Um, I've already copied more or less what it is. I haven't gotten your exact word, Actually, so. you know what would be easier is if you take my sheet and work off the main sheet there, okay? And I'm just going to, um, in the event that we need to change anything there. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just sh go with it. Has everybody got six? I'm going to go with a show of hands. If you have, if this is one of your six, raise, raise your hand, okay? This, it is kind of like school. Okay. Sense of humor. One, two, three, four. Um, appreciate all perspectives. Raise them nice and high so I can see. Four. Yeah, we're only going to vote for six plus all this list, right? No, the list is included in your. No, the list is included. No, no, I know that. Right. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, you, only get to you only get to put your hand up six times, yeah, yeah. so no yeah. double yeah. raise yeah, yeah. your hand. I, I, yeah. I just want to be clear this is a very quick group. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I can say that because humor. the norms have not been established. And humor. <laughs> uh, uh, and humor. And it was, it was an attempt to be humorous. Uh, follow a routine process to share meeting outcomes. 
I thought Donna would be mine. Um, <laughs> no territoriality. Um, problem solved with uh, focus on discussion and reaching resolution. Um, respect roles and opinions. Uh, work with mutual trust. Okay. Are you all playing? Everybody feel like okay, you still have some left over. Mm -hmm. um, pres presume uh, that everyone is welcome and, ex and extend a welcome. Anybody? What that means. Be open to learning from one another. Two, three, oh, two? Three. three. Speak for yourself. <laughs> uh, one person talks at a time. Man, if I was voting, I would vote for that one. Aren't you? No, I'm not voting. I'm, I'm facilitating. I need to be objective. Ask questions. Other, others may be wondering too. To honor the time schedule. I'm retired. <laughs> <laughs> I, think the, I think the best are yet to come now. Um, I know. Participate actively. Ruth, tell me if you can see anybody that I'm missing. Maintain confidentiality. Uh, come to work. Come to the work with 100% of ourselves. In other words, effort and focus. Attend all meetings and be on time. Listen, any? Uh, listen to and show respect for the opinion of others. Here we go. One. Okay, there. We have a winner. <laughs> Follow the agenda. Stay on track. Ensure that credit is given to those to whom it is due. Full side conversations during breaks or after meetings. Cell phones, pagers, all set aside in silent mode. Treat each other with dignity and respect. That's a big one. How many? Practice transparency. Avoid hidden agendas. There we go. That's a big one. Be genuine with each other about ideas, challenges, and feelings. Share uh, complete information up front. Listen first to understand. Importance of listening. That's good. Practice being open-minded. All right, the ones that are coming up on the chart are listen to and show respect for the opinions of others, um, treat each other with dignity and respect, practice transparency and avoid hidden agendas, uh, lis listen, to fir lis listen first to understand, and we have uh, bring a sense of humor and respect roles, opinions, goals and opinions, and also uh, appreciate all perspectives. So those are the, I would say those are probably the seven, one, two, three, four, I have four over there, five, six, seven, right? Some of them are somewhat interrelated. Though. Sure. Uh, yeah. mm -hmm. Whether those get boiled down into something and we pick some others too. But if, you would, if you would like to make a suggestion to boil something, we can do it. I think well, the seven are good to move forward. I mean, they're just guidelines, really, just to make sure that we're right. conducting ourselves in a respectful manner. As, as, I um, think as appreciate all perspectives and respect of roles, opinions of others, uh, they're pretty similar. And there's another one in here somewhere that's yeah. pretty yeah. similar. Yeah. They've they got a very high income. Yeah. Maybe, maybe the respect roles and opinions, the opinions is part of the perspective, but respect, respecting the roles and responsibilities of each of the folks here. We all have very, you know, the board members have different roles and responsibilities than, than the council members, than does Tom Hall, that does the superintendent, and so on. So um, that maybe that gets rid of that. Um, we add responsibilities and get rid of opinions. Any other thing that you'd like to try to uh, boil down? Uh, Kate brought up a good point, and that was, um, that in fact uh, there are some logistical things there, are, and and some of the logistical things are try to stay on time, do the agenda, 
stick to the agenda, those kinds of things. Do you want to revisit or suggest that we take, take on a logistical? Since we were all professionally, we should be doing that regardless. Yeah. Yeah, those are. I mean, that's okay. my opinion. Okay, so we're going to. We're not opposed to it either. It's called a positive presumption. Um, that's that we will all do all that. And, and we maybe we just revisit if in fact there's some some concern. That would conclude my norm filter. So can you go over um, the list again? Yep. Just a finalized list. Yep. Um, listen to and show respect for the opinions of others. Treat each other with dignity and respect. Practice transparency. Avoid hidden agendas. Listen first to understand. Um, bring to the table a sense of humor and appreciate that. Appreciate all perspectives being offered, perspectives and opinions, I guess, and um, respect the individual roles and responsibilities that we all have uh, uh, given our roles. Well, that would be respecting the roles. Uh, yeah. We will certainly prepare this list and send it around. And yep. George alluded to the fact, is this something we'd like to have printed on the agenda? Will it carry it with us throughout? Uh, just as a possible reminder? Sure. All right. We'll by the way, to just uh, include us right on the agenda so it's a constant reminder. And once you write them all out, if you want to try and consolidate some of that, because there's at least, I don't think, you know, you ought to be repeating respect one another's opinions and different perspectives. I think you could bring it all into to one from two or three. Right. <laughs> 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 we, we do a lot with Sunday three. <laughs> Part A. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Nice job. So, Sean, are we ready to move on to yes. item four? That's good. Is everyone else, uh, are we ready to move on? Yes. Okay. All right. Uh, just as a quick intro, and, and perhaps uh, to benefit Bill and Chris, who were part of the initial session, a uh, quick background you might recall. Uh, we put together three basic questions that we put out to the full town council and school board. Uh, they were the same three questions. You all provided responses back to George and myself. Uh, and then we tried to synthesize those and understand what the commonalities were. And, and thankfully, there were a lot, a lot of crossover. And so last session was really devoted almost entirely to that, that process of understanding where those commonalities were. And before you this evening or this afternoon, uh, we've provided kind of a that that compilation, uh, that the commonalities, if you will, and we've kind of characterized them as improvement suggestions. Um, and for those here in the audience and those at home, I've just put together three quick slides here that just simply go over these. And if I beg your indulgence, if you'll think it's worth just kind of walking through them very quickly. Again, they're the same ones on that one sheet that I've provided you. You'd think I could. So the first one was uh, an overall sense that we should just have uh, more joint sessions between the town council and school board throughout the process. Uh, under that, the, the notion that consistent meetings between the, the finance committees, that might be a more common occurrence. Uh, this is a great example of that. And of course, we've just gone through establishing the, the norms and guiding principles um, to work, work under and work with. The second uh, kind of improvement suggestion had to do with budget presentation, uh, that really being a joint presentation of the proposed budget. Historically, I simply fold in the school budget into my budget. I'm the one that makes the presentation and it's no more than kind of reporting the bottom line numbers. There's no uh, qualitative uh, piece to that. And so what you'll see in the next part of this conversation is George and I propose to collaborate on that presentation so it's a more substantive uh, and representative presentation of both sides of the budget. Uh, the other one has to do with status quo budget and new initiatives in identified. That seemed to be a pretty strong theme and interest um, to focus attention on the new stuff in the budget as opposed to the minutia of uh, things that carry year to year uh, that end up occupying a lot of time but you don't have much control over. And then uh, the other part of that is identifying major cost drivers. Next, uh, some sort of open forum, town hall style meeting with the public. And again, you'll see as we get into the proposed process and timeline, we're proposing to do just that. And that would take the place, fulfill the requirement of the public hearing. I think there's some logistical and practical challenges that 
this group might want to talk about, where and when and how we actually accomplish that so it's productive. But the notion being an opportunity for an open exchange of information. So we'd be as prepared as we can to field questions from the floor and answer them on the spot. And uh, to the extent we can't, we can certainly provide follow-up information. But I think we can be adequately staffed uh, to do a fair job of that. Uh, so again, questions asked and answered on the spot. That's something that's been really missed throughout the budget process. It's really kind of one-sided. Uh, a whole lot of conversation around long-term planning from a facilities point of view. Um, I know the school's undertaken some of that work. Uh, we really want to encourage a five-year capital plan. And I think some of that work can be folded into that. Uh, and the town needs to follow suit there as well. And there's some conversation around multi-year budgeting, uh, like the state does. Um, and the last three bullets are, are kind of improvement suggestions. Uh, collaborative and joint goal setting to identify the external impacts in the budget. Uh, the unfunded mandates are part of that conversation. And the related piece, engaging uh, the legislative delegation um, around those issues uh, and others, perhaps. But as it relates to budget, it's really those external factors pushed upon us by the state. So in a nutshell, those were uh, kind of boiled down. Those are the improvement suggestions. And with that in mind, uh, George and I have put together a proposed process and timeline. And you should have in your packet there or not. I'm passing it out now. Um, is this the eight colored? Yeah, just, it's the uh, multicolored calendar. This is probably the one that you should go with, the one that I'm handing out now. It's, a, it's got the uh, it's got the, the disclaimer that it's a draft. Thank you. No say you, you might be violating a norm by changing it without my approval.
suggest uh, when you talk about future meetings and topics, uh, that might be something worthy. Maybe not the whole group, but a subset of this group can work on just the logistics of that forum to make sure that we're thinking it through, the venue's right, uh, the right people are there, so it can actually be a productive session. And the final piece I'll allude to uh, is at the back end in the school uh, budget validation vote. In modern times, since the advent of this validation vote, it's been uh, five or six years now since we've been doing this, that really drives our process timeline in many respects. Uh, because if history suggests anything, uh, we should provide for uh, the possibility of the second time having to go to the voters should you fail the first. And on occasions, we've had to go three times. So I must admit this June 9th date is uh, is late, and it makes me a bit uncomfortable. It, it essentially gives us uh, one date to probably fall back to should a second vote be required. But it really doesn't give us, uh, I, I don't think, any opportunity for a third vote, again, should it be required. And I guess my concern is heightened this year just because we're, uh, the state's budget is in process, and the last time, two years ago, it was late June before they finalized it, and it impacted us. So I think we can anticipate that everything will be compressed to mid to late June anyway. So I, I flag that, and there may be the potential of moving that up to, the, to May 26th, and in doing so gain a, a week. What's the span of time between, uh, the shortest possible span of time <coughs> between votes? Two weeks. Uh, it can be less than two weeks. I'll, I can bring Tody in and she can tell you the particulars. The complaint we've heard is a quick turnaround doesn't allow much time for the public to, one, know about the special election and to get educated about it. I honestly don't know how to avoid that given the kind of requirement that this validation mm -hmm. imposes on us. Uh, I think that's always going to be a complaint of the process. I, I would like to point out, though, if we do miss the deadline, it's not catastrophic. It's not like right. all budget stops. Everything. Right. We just revert back to the previous year until we get it corrected. So it's not like a, our our organizations will stop ceasing to function or anything like that. I agree with you that it's it's you want to have that cushion, but if we do miss that deadline, I'd rather have it the way that it is only because we'll, we should have more information, I hope, by then. And I'd, I'd like to avoid putting something out there and then have the state come in late, change it, or do whatever they do and then have to go back, like last year, we had to go back a second time when we got more money back two years, uh, or two, right. two years ago. Yeah. So, so I, I mean, I, I think we can find that balance. Um, I'm not worried that if we, we have to have that last date be before the, the deadline, you know, you know what I mean? Because if, it, if we don't make that the goal first time around, if we, if, we, if we can accomplish what we want to accomplish with this group and our, our two organizations, we'll go first time through. Kim, Tom, can you identify what prejudice results from going beyond July 1st? I mean, the charter provides for that. It has a mechanism uh, in the event the budget is not approved before the end of the fiscal year. Uh, I just think it's a complicating factor. Uh, I would expect you to continue to work and fairly quickly have one in place. Um, I'm not aware that it's happened in modern history. And I, it probably ought to be avoided, but it's not catastrophic. And it does happen routinely in other districts. Yeah, that's why I'd rather go late and get as much information as possible for the certainty of people voting on this, and then be able to still provide enough time between votes so that we don't feel like people don't know what's going on. And stay positive that it will pass the first time because everybody's concerns and questions have been answered. And yeah. Everybody understands. So that'd be great. Yeah. As long as it's not prejudicial in any great, terrific way. Yeah. I think it, um, it, it, it positively presupposes that this change that we're going through and the way that we're working together is going to allow um, the public to be better informed and to be um, uh, have a better sense of, of the direction that they want to take the town. The, um, the second piece that would speak to the positive side of this is that um, it is that would typically that first uh, that second uh, Tuesday in June would be typically be reserved for election um, though there's nothing on the ballot is that correct Tom? They no, it's not because there's no, oh. no, no primary. primary. Yeah. But, that's right. what I was ask. but but in the event that it were to be scheduled it would be scheduled on that date so there's a there's a cost factor 
And the third is um, if it were to be on the 26th, it would be people coming right back from the Memorial Day holiday into um, a voting day, which um, has which the board and the council have just done their second reading, in other, uh, in other words, adopted the budget on the 20, 20th and 21st, um, and there's the, the only thing between that and voting is the Memorial Day holiday, and I think that there has been concern before that there was not an, enough process and or communication or clarification time between um, having the budget and, and because people actually voting. the newspapers voting. would not be able to report June 2 would be the, you know, final. the middle date you would look to. to, to yeah, because they go to print on the 19th. Yeah. So they wouldn't even so report the, the outcome on the 20th, 21st, just they're not going to get reported. So, so hearing all that makes perfect sense. June 2 would be yeah. the, you know, the only other date, the earlier date, that you could consider probably. The other point I would uh, just note, uh, this schedule suggests the council takes final action on the budget May 20 the regular meeting, and the school board would take final action the day after. Traditionally, and I don't think it has to be this way, the school board's taken final action on their school budget before the council's taken final action on the overall budget. But to the extent that the council's action uh, changes their bottom line number, which it almost always does, uh, they often have to then have another meeting and deal with whatever the council handed them. So I, I think having this sequence makes more sense. And not that your budget process and approval of your budget isn't important. What really matters in terms of the adoption process and the validation process is what the town council does. So May 20th is the day that the town council sets the number for the referendum vote. Yes. Yeah, but, um, just to um, just to piggyback on what you said, um, you'll you'll notice, however, that on the 13th. Um, we also scheduled in uh, one of these meetings um, between mm -hmm. uh, the school board and the town council, presuming that at that point in time, we've pretty much got all of our numbers, and if there are things that really need to be ironed out, it should be done in, in that sort of setting of really working together and, and sort of coming, and coming up with a, um, presumably, a, some level of compromise or some understanding so that um, although the board now sort of forfeits having the last, the last word on their budget, um, uh, even before the town council gets a hold of it, um, I think that, again, it's a positive presumption that the way that we're doing business differently is going to result with a different outcome. Yeah. And um, just in the event that it hasn't, by the 13th, everybody's kind of locked in together to try to do some problem solving and, and uh, make good on some of those norms that we've set here. Is that making sense to folks? Yep. Uh, this doesn't attempt to identify joint meetings of the two finance units. No, no, no. I think this, that May 13th, George just pointed to, is intended to be a uh, full town council, a full board. board. Full town. Uh, no, so there are multiple opportunities, and this group ought to talk about how to carry your work on outside of this schedule. And, and we. Uh, Tom and I have made note of that because uh, you're looking at two months, really February and March, that offer themselves uh, for joint meetings of the finance committee. So once the once you decide on whatever the next agenda item is, uh, one of one of the agenda items, either for this group or a subgroup, really needs to be how is that how is that um, that town meeting. Yes. Uh, uh, Set up. How is that going to work? Um, what time is that going to happen? Where is it going to be? Are we going to have a moderator, et cetera? So I, I think that there's it's, it's probably, that certainly is one of the agenda items that this week should probably settle on. And I was actually going to recommend that maybe we take action to form a subcommittee to tackle that if everyone's agreeable to start forming that and finding the resources, you know, whether it's the location, a facilitator, and whatever else we might need. So have we moved past this? Is everyone fine with this? I'm fine with this. We can clean it up and, uh, and distribute it to our collective groups and maybe get some further feedback. But it, it certainly is in keeping with the charter requirements and timelines. Um, and I think I've spoken to, uh, so long as the council's fine, 
recommend having the presentation done at a workshop before the regular meeting on the first. And we just recognize that we're um, limiting our chances on the back end and later in June, uh, just depending on how the vote goes and how the state budget goes. That's going to be something we have to deal with. So with that, uh, Mr. Chairman, I guess we'll turn it back to you for future meeting date, time, and maybe agenda items. So um, since we're on this um, on the schedule, um, to uh, Donna's previous comment, I wanted to address, and that was on the uh, the routine process of sharing meeting outcomes. Um, I just so you know, Donna, at least for the council, um, I consider it a responsibility of myself as the chair of the finance committee for our group to communicate that information. So I want you to know that this and everything else will be shared, and maybe Chris can do the same for you as part of his finance committee report. Uh, without having to create a really lengthy process. I, don't, I think it's a fairly simple communication piece, so I'll definitely share this um, along with the norms. Um, if, if it's okay with everyone, even though it's technically it's not on the agenda, I'd like to uh, uh, get the group's approval to form the subcommittee. Um, and, um, Sean, I, I, know, just, Sean, yeah, I just want to go back to the, to the report. I think it would be nice um, if we could have uh, whoever's keeping minutes have those typed up and we can at least distribute them to the respective boards. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I would I mean, like, I'd love to be <clears throat> on your distribution list for finance committee minutes. That way, and I would think you guys might, I don't know if you're interested in being on sure. our distribution, for fun, but that way at least I understand some of your the language and, uh, and, and focus and it's just part of, to, for me to understand where you're at, I need to get closer. Not that I'm interested in intruding myself into it, but I, don't, I won't be able to fully appreciate what you're saying in all cases yep. if I were not. So um, if we can, maybe we'll, um, if there's consensus, we can uh, add all of the school board finance committee members to our distribution list for finance committee. And then also, um, if you could add us to yours, I think that would be just a sharing of information to keep us all informed. Um, so on the on the issue of the committee uh, forming the subcommittee, um, Chris, do you and I want to maybe take a lead on that? Uh, yeah, fine. Unless there's someone else that wants to do it. Yeah, Bill, you said you're retired. Would you like to do it? <laughs> Can I have that sense of humor? Come on, Bill. <laughs> If you can take the lead for me, I'm kind of booked it as it is. But That's that'd be great. I'll work with you. Yeah. I'm okay. gonna have a little time with And this is to spread, spread the wealth a little bit here. This is to work on uh, the uh, town hall. Town hall me uh, style meeting. I think George and I need to be a part of that as well. Right. Oh, yeah. The four of us, I think, would be a great. And then, and then we'll bring Donna and Jessica into the fold as the leaders of both groups. Well, we'll certainly report back to this group. Yeah. Unless, uh, uh, Tom, unless you have an objection, I, I like that electronic format that you have for scheduling meetings. That seems to be very effective. I mean, you've never used it before, way. but you know, yeah. 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 unless you have to be the one administering yeah. it. Yeah, well, uh, <laughs> sure. I, I, that, it, that gives me options in the, my yeah. scheduling planning that helps me quite a bit. But if it's, if it's too cumbersome, we can. We can no, no, it's certainly not. Okay. Uh, so on that point, um, I presume that this group will want to continue reading. February and so March, perhaps, and it doesn't need to stop then either. But should I uh, float some dates out um, over those 60 days or so, just so we start to kind of get yes. the dates? Then we can talk about topics and agendas at uh, yep. those meetings. Mm -hmm. I mean, it might, it might not be a bad idea. I don't know if we if we want to set a time and decide are we going to meet once a month or try and get twice a month or what the frequency is going to be. I mean, right now we're still kind of in the beginning of it and it's not right. a lot of substance. Right. Really, there's a lot of substance. Yeah. It right. might be for for at least a couple a month or a month and a half or so. For probably six weeks. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I mean, the agenda items are probably going to drive. Uh, something you have to meet. Well, it depends what you want, what what topics you want to talk about. Uh, yeah. You know. It, it could be, and I might suggest that it would be a good topic. Uh, I've heard rumor that there may be a CIP proposal to do um, a technology advancement at the high school level. 
that's a big meaty topic that it would be great to kind of get out there. <coughs> Seems to me this group would be a great one to be uh, to consume that information and for the public to hear it and those sorts of things. So there's probably stuff we can do nearer term. Um, that's true. Yeah. Well, so I, I, I'll propose you know a handful of dates and we'll look to finalize maybe two or three dates over the next 60 days just so we get them on our calendars. And go from there. for the next 60 days, if we're going to meet uh, on a, s a couple of occasions or more, maybe uh, you and George could talk about what what are those important issues that are worthy of discussion, so that we have some consideration. Of well, what we'll we would also like to make this uh, relevant to you, so we'd like your input. Right. What well, do you want we, to talk about? Yeah. Um, yeah. But, uh, and that presumes that we would. Give you any ideas that? And I think if um, um, I like the idea if you can put out a bunch of dates and let's see what the uh, everyone's availability is um, over the next 30 and 60 days. I think that personally, I think in February you probably could get away with just one meeting, yeah. but then starting in March we'd want to ramp that up. Um, and the reason is one is I think that by February we should be able to hopefully uh, finalize what are the um, uh, not the boundaries, but what are the components of the town hall meeting. Mm -hmm. We'll know more about that so we can finalize it and then communicate it to the town council and the school board as a whole. Mm -hmm. um, and that the second meeting in February or maybe even the first meeting in March because I would hope that we would have quite a bit of lead time with publicity and getting the news out there to the public and the schools and uh, you know whatever the venues might be. Um, so, um, and then maybe what Chris, you and I can do is that once we get the dates in place and the topics um, from everyone, uh, we can then, you and I can put together an agenda for each of those uh, workshop meetings that we have sure. with and the help of George and Tom. And I think it, uh, to Bill's point too, is if we're sharing meeting minutes too, I mean uh, we've got regularly scheduled finance committees that could generate a Q&A session exactly. and we keep that a permanent part of the yeah. agenda where we say the last thing is questions and answers for back and forth for, for the two groups or something. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And because and for me my preference is that we actually are setting an agenda and the topics at least two meetings in advance or one and a half. That way you kind of had time to do the research, time to get information. It's not just, okay, I'm told two days before the meeting that the topic is going to be right. capital projects and right. facilities. Um, so I think that would be a good timeline. Yep. Is, is it worth perhaps going around the table to see, to get some topic ideas, just to see if we can start to focus on that? Because some of the stuff sure. you need some lead time to I think that would be great. Uh, uh, technology advancement at, at the school system, particularly 9 through 12. Absolutely. <coughs> Any other ideas? Well, I think I, I just had uh, kind of build on it. You know, we had tried to identify cost drivers as things that were going to. So anything that we know might be an unusual cost driver. Getting that deserves a lengthier discussion. Yeah. Uh, some education and background, and that I think is important to understand. Yeah. And, and I guess maybe to the flip side of that too, if we're if we're going to be discussing things, we can. I'd like to know what what you guys have on yeah. your agenda. I mean, if you guys, if there's a major issue coming up, a major yeah. capital improvement that you guys have to really focus on this year. We, I'd like to know that from our side, so that we we know kind of where you guys are positioned and where you're where you're where you're thinking and where you're. Yeah, exactly. I think you know, what, what, from a greater municipal point of view, what are our priorities? Right. Uh, are there some things that, for whatever reason, have now come together and really are more compelling than they might have been otherwise? or have been passed over for years, mm -hmm. and, but they're substantial. Mm -hmm. Well, um, just to be back on what you were saying, um, you, you might want to be aware that tonight for the school board meeting on the agenda is going to be kind of a, a look at where we stand in this town in terms of technology. Mm -hmm. If you're able to catch that, uh, we'll be typing that over at the library tonight, not here. and. Um, if, if you're able to catch that or you catch it in the future, that would be a good piece yep. for you to be able to inform yourself within advance. And my other thought is um, around new initiatives that are coming down on school systems as requirements by the state that have huge impacts either in terms of time or money that um, may be of worth for you as well as the community at large. 
it, I it, find it, mandates. I and it, it may not be just stuff that we know is coming this budget cycle. We've got a pretty long list of things that we know are on the horizon. But it, it's just a question of whether yeah. they hit now, later, or they may even be keep getting pushed out. A few things have been pushed out, mm -hmm. but we still have to be aware that they're out there potentially impacting us. Yeah. And, and particularly, they, just yeah. one thing, particularly because even though they might get pushed out, the work needs to happen right now. Right. And it impacts our, our staff right now for that future date. So. I think there should be a uh, balance in the, pr in the information. So technology isn't just an educational or a school issue. Technology throughout the community, whether it's the public safety building, town hall, um, public works department, you know, whatever those other areas are should be included so that we have a full perspective of the technology in the town and the impact um, that it has, even though we know that the school. Um, uh, when I said the technology, it's not just about the Wi-Fi or upgrades, it's, it's about the educational plan and the whole 9 through 12 issue. Um, so it's a little bit bigger. But um, the other piece I wanted to mention on the town side was that there was some comments or questions about um, um, energy, um, I, don't, I can't think of the right word, either energy efficiency or you know maybe converting our um, automobile to energy driven type of uh, alternative energy uh, types of vehicles. Um, you know, whether it's uh, turning the town hall into green, a green building and using solar paneling, things such as that. There was some new initiative discussions about that. Um, that's something that we're truly looking at going forward, probably not in this budget cycle, but um, in the future it might be a good topic. I think it was Peter, you had some interest in that. I don't know if you still, it would be a good topic. The only thing I just want to flag is that um, you know, staff is very quickly going to be fully immersed in budget preparation. So, I mean, it's a huge preoccupation, as it should be for us. So, some of these things, uh, I'm not sure if we're going to have time, yes. nor is it necessary to have some of these conversations um, in advance of part of the budget, unless it's you know, part of the budget. If you will. These are things that, and hopefully, this relationship continues beyond. I think it's part of the intent. These are things that we can take up on you know, months down the road. Yeah, and I don't expect us to, to resolve all the technology questions with the first thing. I think it's yeah. just kind of giving each other a heads up of these are things that are coming that are going to be major factors moving forward. I, I know we won't be ready to present you with detailed information of how we're going to execute and what it's yeah. going to cost and all that stuff. But we'll at least, you know, it, it's, it's, it's part of our process of, of organizing priorities and things like that on our end. So if you know that, you're not surprised in April or March or April, we sit down and go, okay, now we've got this portion of CIP and it's not a surprise. You're like, yeah, we've talked about that. Now let's start talking about the details of it a little bit more. How are we going to fund it? How are we going to approach it? What's our execution plan? That kind of thing. But at least you guys will know that that's, that's on. It's, it's out there. It's coming. It just occurred to me, we don't really have to look any further than the strategies we just reviewed at the top end of this. I mean, cost drivers is one. New, uh, discussing new initiatives is another one. These, these are things presumably that have direct budget impact in the near term. So I think we probably have a basic framework and template for yep. the next two or three meetings. It's just a matter of fitting them in. Yep. And that's great to kind of divide it to things that are impact the budget. We talk about, you know, now and things that are longer range, maybe that comes after the budget season as we continue to meet and talk and mm -hmm. kind of start working toward the next year. I was hoping we could hold a meeting at Wentworth School. Uh, I've never been in it, and uh, I'd love to be able to combine. Uh, you don't need an excuse, you know. You can come in any time. <laughs> yeah, but I, want, but, I, but I don't want to be wandering the halls. I'd, I'd rather... We're going to lock you down. George, yeah, no, George will know where you are, don't worry. Still there's some monitors in my office. Yeah. <laughs> I'd be happy to give you a tour. If you just, just give uh, Kelly a call. I'd, I'd be happy. I'm, they're right. very regularly, so. Okay. Which, which meeting were you suggesting? Well, just a meeting of ourselves, but uh, I just think there are other uh, town council members who should know more about uh, our newest large capital investment. Maybe that's where your town hall forum is held. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that would be a good venue. Yeah, yeah. Excellent. Yeah, let's get more people in so they know what, what we've done. Well, I know we have.
Well, the door's open. Let's, let's go Good. to the door. All right. Oh, Good. I mean, that's I think nice to hear. Yeah. Uh, you know, I don't think you need an excuse. Just, I mean, obviously, uh, you know, we, we got to schedule it. Yeah, we want sure that you're... Don't want to scare the kids. Yeah. <laughs> 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 no, that's why they keep us, they keep hey. me up during the day. Yeah. Right? Hey, teacher, this is, this is <laughs> a guy room in the hall. We've got white hair. So, um, it sounds like that we have uh, kind of... Uh, I put our hands around the future meeting. Tom's going to set out a, um, a doodle or whatever that was called um, to set up a date, a time, preference, and then um, we pretty much have a template for the topics regarding um, our agenda items. And you know, um, Chris and I will keep communicating and setting the agenda um, for that next meeting as well as when it is. Um, and then our goal is um, also for us our go away or outcome is that we will take back this information, the respective chairs will take back the information and share it with their respective boards um, as it's been shared and we'll do that on a regular basis. Um, anything else for the good of the order, uh, good of the group that no. they, before we close? Just while everyone's assembled, uh, is there, I propose anything from first in the morning to early afternoon to late afternoon for these. Is there, I don't want to waste your time or proposed dates or times and days that just don't work for people. Um, any big objections to a, a variety of dates and times? Uh, I'm open. Good. My, yeah, my, my only challenge is usually a Tuesday morning is difficult for me. I'm, I'm a regularly scheduled conference call, but I can I can uh, be flexible that if I have we to be. We share on Tuesday morning. morning, so it's easy enough. No, it's on the first of March. Good for you. Anything else? Uh, so before closing, um, I'd like to also have a couple of minutes if anybody from the public that would like to speak. Uh, you're welcome to stand up. You can mention your name and address uh, for the record. That'd be great. Mike Turek, 11 Bay Berry Lane. Mike Turek, 11 Bay Berry Lane. Is this being televised? Because there are people that I know of that are interested in watching these joint meetings. And then the question becomes, how are you going to televise it from the Wentworth School? These meetings aren't being televised yet, and we'll have to sort that out. But the intent, I'm sure, for the town hall forum is to be fully televised. So there's a mechanism in place because we're, I mean, we're at the library tonight. That's going to be recorded and 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 taped, and they they do a tape delay uh, broadcast. That answers so it. Thank you make, much. I'm sure we can make an arrangement for that. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. And I'll uh, take a motion to adjourn. I heard a second out there, so all in favor? <laughs> Thank you, everybody. Thank you, everybody.